back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomo's biology and in this video lecture I'll be talking about the different types of cancer drugs and some new modern approaches to develop drugs against cancer now the problem with dealing cancer is that cancer is nothing but the modification of a healthy cell now the modification tells the cell to grow and divide uncontrollably and it produces a mass of cell and it does not stop there now those mass of cell can invade tissue and it can be transferred or transported from one tissue to the other tissue of your body through the bloodstream now this feature which is known as metastasis or invading tissue and transferring the cancer cell from one place to the other place of the body and create cancer there is the most dangerous thing that they have now there are multiple ways a cancer can be treated but for all this type of treatment, it's very necessary that we find the cancer cell at the early stage of the development. Because if you look at the cancer cells, they are not turned cancer overnight. Cancer is developed over the time slowly by sequential accumulation of intracellular changes. Now, if you look at here, for at least three to four different stages are required for the cancer cells to properly gain all the functionality and grow and thrive the whole body. Now we need to figure out at the early time when the cancer is just induced in those cells. If we find them there, we can prevent the cell to make a tumor and then also we can prevent the metastasis or the transferring of the cells from one tissue to the next. Now here I have listed five different types of drugs. Now mostly I listed the name of uh, the generic name of the drug. I have not listed the company names but few of them listed as a company name as well which are much more pro popular to know. So we talk about each of this type because these drugs, these five types of the drugs they affect differently. They completely affect in other zones. So we look at each of them and their mode of action. For example the first one is bortezomib. Bortezomib is the kind of drug that prevents proteasome complex inside the cell. Now what happens if you look at the cancer cells, inside the cell while the cancer is growing and developing, there are a lot of uh, tumor repressor genes and tumor repressor proteins that body has. For example, P53, P21, P27, PRB, those are the tumor repressor genes and proteins that, that are there. Now this tumor repressor protein's job is to regulate the cell cycle. It can halt the cell cycle called cell cycle arrest. For example, P53 can stop the cell division and also signal the cell uh, to die which is known as apoptosis. Now as those tumor suppressor, tumor suppressor gene associated tumor suppressor proteins as we mentioned P53 is doing those job. Now if these proteins are alive if these proteins are working inside the cell in proper concentration, they will never allow the normal cell to convert into a cancerous cell. So almost like 80% of the cancers, you will see there is a problem with P53 activity and functionality. Now what happens when P53 is working, now cancer cell needs to degrade them. It needs to get away or get away from this P53, get rid of P53. So this is not only for P53, cancer cell depends on proteasome complex to degrade many different proteins in our body, inside the cell. And the idea is proteasome complex is nothing but a cylindrical structure of complex made up with multiple proteins and it has some opening and closing of the doors uh, and in the catalytic domain in the middle. And let's say this is the catalytic domain in the middle. So this proteasome complex uh, can engulf for actually other proteins which are tagged with ubiquitin molecule can easily enter to this proteasome and proteasome can degrade those proteins, break those proteins in fragments. That is the job of proteasome complex in eukaryotic cell. Now proteasome complex is required in many many important features of the cell. Now there are many proteins that we don't need in different time stamp, different time point of the development of the cell as well as the growth of the cell. This proteasome needs to chew them, break them down so that we can get rid of those proteins. Now cancer cell also relies on this proteasome complex. Let me write it here. Proteasome. Cancer relies on this proteasome complexes 
because it needs to degrade a lot of other proteins inside the cell. So if proteasome is healthy and it's fully functional, then cancer can grow in a much better way. Now, scientists found out that if we can block the entry point of proteasome, that will not allow proteins to in take entry inside the proteasome complex. As a result, it can prevent the cancer cell to grow. That is the idea with bortezomib. In this case, bortezomib is a type of protein, uh, it's a type of drug that blocks the entry point of the proteasome. So if I draw, let's say this is the color green, it blocks the proteasome opening complex. So proteins cannot take entry and uh, as cancer cells rely on a lot of uh, the proteasome activity due to not properly using proteasome in these conditions will not allow them to grow. This is the idea with bortezomib. The next type of drug is Nutlin 2. This is an example of the drug Nutlin 2. Now this drug is used for a prevention of P53 MDM2 interaction. So let me write it. Now as I mentioned you earlier, P53 plays a vital role. It acts as a cellular guardian. While the cell cycle is going on, P53 takes the decision when the cell will continue to grow or it will stop the growth of the cell. Now if there is any kind of DNA damage and DNA stress, P53 will block the cell cycle called cell cycle arrest and then it will try to repair those damage. For example, if it's a DNA damage, P53 will recruit the DNA damage repair proteins to take the action. Now if DNA damage response protein fail to do the action, in that case P53 will bring the apoptosis pathway to kill the cell. Now it's a very important protein while thinking of cancer. Now P53 concentration is regulated by another protein known as MDM2. MDM2 inhibits P53 in normal conditions. So if MDM2 is present, P53 is inactive. Now if P53 is active, in that case, uh, the process of uh, apoptosis can continue. Now the idea is, in some of the cancers, this P53 is mutated. And as P53 is mutated, it will not allow uh, the, the job of MDM to process there. Now if it's mutated badly, in that case loss of function mutation of P53 that can turn a normal cell into the cancerous cell. So here the job of Nutlin is to find out this P53 MDM2 complex and there's a specific region in between P53 and MD, where the MDM2 binds. So here Nutlin2 will find that complex in P53 and it will attach to P53. This is Nutlin 2. So as Nutlin 2 attaches to the P53 in the region where MDM2 is supposed to bind, so MDM2 is incapable of binding with P53. So P53 can be free. If P53 is free, that means it will allow the cell to die. It will not allow the cell to pass the cell cycle stages because Free P53 can work definitely. P53 can work by recruiting DNA repair enzymes. If it fails, then the cell P53 will signal the cell to kill itself by secreting, uh, by activating other proteins known as BACs, which will create pores in the mitochondrial membrane that will ultimately trigger a sequence and cascade of chemical reactions inside the cell that will kill the cell. So here the idea is to create high concentration of P53 inside the cell by preventing MDM2. That is the job of Nutlin2 because Nutlin2 will not allow MDM2 to interact with P53. Okay. Now the third one is Herceptin. Herceptin is a type of monoclonal antibody and this Herceptin can interact with a specific type of receptor on the surface of a specific type of cells mostly found in the breast cancer. And the cell surface receptor are mostly growth factors known as epidermal growth factor receptor. It's known as HER2. This HER2 receptor is found in mostly in those breast cancer situations in those tissues while this antibody act to mask that receptor. Let's look at it how. Normally what happens in, in, in this breast cancer situations that the cell, the, endo, the epithelial cells and the endothelial cells you can see. In this case this is the heart 
let's say this is HER2. HER2 is the receptor for the growth factor in those cells. And this response of the signaling that goes downstream that will allow the cell to grow depends on two such two such HER receptors to dimerize with each other. Then only there will be a signal inside the cell that will trigger the cell and tell the cell to grow and divide. Now what we do here in case of uh, this Herceptin. Herceptin is the antibody as I mentioned you earlier. Herceptin can properly interact with let's say this is the structure. This is the Herceptin. It binds with one of these HER2 receptors and as it binds with one of the HER2 receptors, it prevents two of the HER2 receptors to dimerize. So as it prevents the dimerization of HER2 receptors, it will not allow the signal to pass inside the cell. As a result, cell growth signal is turned off. The fourth kind is flavopyridol. And the job of flavopyridol is to block the activity of CDK or cyclin dependent kinase. You know, in every single stages of cell cycle and cell division, there is a set of CDK and cyclin partner that brings and process the cell to pass from one phase to the next. For example, a cell to pass from G1 to S, it needs G1 cyclin, G1 S cyclin. For a cell to pass through the mitotic phase, it needs mitotic cyclin or M phase cyclin and its CDK partner. Now, in this case, this flavopyridol actually prevents CDK to interact with cyclin partner. Now, CDK will not function because without cyclin, because it is cyclin dependent kinase enzyme. Without cyclin, they don't have its kinase activity. So, if you think here, is CDK molecules are there and they have specific site for interaction with cyclin. And once cyclin, so normally cyclin interacts here. This is the interaction between CDK and cyclin. But the job for flavopyridol is to bind to that region where CDK interacts with cyclin. And also uh, to bind to the specific region of the CDK which, inter, which part is involved in the interaction with ATP. Because you know cyclin CDK interaction is not enough. Because the job of CDK is to phosphorylate other proteins and for this phosphorylation they needs a phosphate donor which in this case is ATP. So CDK also have a specific part where ATP attached and then the signaling process continue. Now in this case this flavopyridol actually interact in the area where ATP should bind. So this is the area where instead of ATP this flavopyridol interacts. So as flavopyridol interacts to the region, the pocket where CDK is supposed to bind with ATP, ATP is unable to bind. As a result, those CDK cyclin complex is formed, but still they render inactive because they don't have any ATP. So they don't have any phosphate transfer agent or phosphate donor agent. That is the reason flavopyridol drugs can work. The final fifth kind of drug, example Glivec, Terceva, are the type of drug that blocks growth factor receptor. Now you can ask that what is the difference between then uh, Glivec and Herceptin? Well, Herceptin is a masking agent of the growth factor, but it's a monoclonal antibody. Well, Glivec and Terceva are not that kind. They are other type of protein. They are not monoclonal antibody, but they also prevent the growth factor receptor. For example, Terceva blocks the epidermal growth factor receptor so that the epidermal growth factors cannot signal the cell and cannot tell the cell to grow and divide. So the growth pathways outside the cell can be prevented if we use Terceva or Glivec. Okay? So normally what happens inside our cell, the cells have a surface receptor which is let's say epidermal growth factor receptor. Normally interacts with the epidermal growth factor coming from outside and upon binding with epidermal growth factor it signals the cell inside and the signaling ultimately activates so many intracellular signaling molecules that finally activates 
the transcription factors inside the nucleus and that helps to transcribe specific proteins that are required for the cell to grow and divide. Now in this case using Glivec or Terceva, Terceva attaches to this EGF instead of EGF, Terceva blocks uh, this epidermal growth factor receptor. So as a result EGF failed to bind. So as a result it prevents the cell to receive any signal that can trigger cancer inside the cell. So these are the five different type of drugs that we talked about. Now from the beginning if I summarize, bortezomib help to block the proteasome complex so that the cancer cells cannot exploit the functionality of the proteasome to grow. While Nutling 2 helps in prevention of the P53 and DM2 interaction so that P53 concentration rises inside the cell and that prevents cancer. Third is Herceptin, a monoclonal antibody that masks the HER2 receptor in surface of the uh, endothelial epithelial cells that can prevent the growth of the cell. Fourth is Flavopyridol. Flavopyridol blocks the CDK at its ATP binding cleft so that ATP is failed to attach and the functionality of CDK is prevented. Fifth, Glivec and Terceva. They are also growth factor interacting agent, growth factor receptor binding agent. And as they bind with growth, growth factor receptor in the outer side, it will not allow growth factor to interact with the growth factor receptor and the signaling process can be prevented. So in all these different drugs, the ultimate goal is to prevent the signaling of the growth and Nutling 2 helps to enhance the apoptosis of the cell. So this in a sense are the drugs that are used to treat cancer and the different variants. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that, share this video with your friends because they need to know the truth too. And if you need to know more about cancer biology, I have a series of video of cancer biology. I have a playlist that I have created recently. You can watch that. The link is in the description and play those videos. It will be helpful for you to understand. Thank you.